Welcome to the Solon Vanguard channel. Today we are talking about what should be banned in the game of card fight Vanguard. Now before that I do have to say 50cards.shop is currently doing a major new promotion. It's like a big promo weekend. A lot of info will be splashing up here. You can use the code Solom for a big big discount and basically just crazy sale. Link will be in the description. Use the code Solom. Buy your heart out. So of course Vanguard we have three formats. We have Overdress, we have V and we have Premium and we're discussing which things should be banned in each format or maybe nothing needs to be banned that's also an option we're gonna go over that now i know some people will get very mad and go huh, you should just play around it why are people always bitching you know you know just play around stuff given that these price cards behind me right here you know 14 in total of which like I forgot count, but a lot of them are this season. I'd like to think I know how to play around things and you can still find that certain things are potentially problematic and need to be addressed for the health of the format. So no huh, play around it. We know how to play around it. It's okay. Don't worry about that one. So for overdress, beyond the thing of ban over triggers, of course, which I don't think is going to happen in the standard format, though it would be incredible. I don't think overdress needs any hits. Now we can back this up with data as well. We can go into the Twitter thing right after here. Fuzzy Paradox makes some amazing, you know, stats and that way we can see what has been topping this season. But even though overdress does show some decks being better than others, none of them are overwhelmingly better. Of course, because SAC also has a slightly bigger effect in overdress. But beyond that, and most importantly, overdress is the standard format. So we get new sets constantly. So it's way more likely that we get a set six or whatever with a new season, the new trial decks and so forth. And that that basically balances each other out very, very quickly. When set three, we were like, oh, Bruce is best deck. Gravidia might be after that. Loro is also really good. And then set four comes around and everything is different. So because standard, you know, you have your continual power creep. I don't think right now there's any deck in standard that really needs hitting. Nothing is flying too high. And if a couple decks, you know, are stronger than others, again, a new set will probably fix that. That is, however, very different from something like V and Premium, where the support is more sparse. Now, of course, in Premium, technically everything is Premium support, but the power level of Overdress is still a bit lower than Premium. So the Overdress sets, while they will sometimes have influence on Premium, they won't completely blow it out of the water. So for that reason, you know, V and Premium need a little bit more heavy-handed influence when it comes to their ban list. So Moving into V, I think we're starting to see some very, very solid trends, not just from Japan, but also in the West. We've been seeing Springfest results, and I think it's time to murder Prism. I've been playing Prism. We have two first places with Prism this season in Springfest. Yeah, deck's just insane. I don't know what to tell you. Like, we already knew this was going to happen. When we saw the ban list results, we were like, wait, I understand why you hit these, but like, where's the primary con? contender where's the best deck it wasn't enough you know the choice restriction is not enough on the list right now it gets rid of like ellie from the deck but beyond that who cares prism will always find new generic support to make it better and now in the new clan collection we are getting the duo grade one that makes the deck even better so not only is prism already best deck and the ban list nuked a ton of shit from right under it so it got even better in comparison now they give it even more support while the rest of clan collection seemingly doesn't do that much now i know we saw a good cold paladin card we saw ildona for a shadow paladin cool sure but like beyond that the landscape doesn't seem to be changing that much and so for that reason i say hit prism and hit it hard i think we should hit rosa to zero that's right the grade two that doesn't mean the deck is entirely dead you know you still have clear you have the new duo and then you would also just play four nectaria the grade four will the deck be slower and less powerful of course you know i will no longer see it dominating tournaments no but it will still be playable in my opinion and that's fine by me i think that's a fine spot for the deck to be so prism just fucking nuke it enough we're about to have two years of prism domination in v i think that's more than enough v already has the issue of only getting support maybe once a year twice a year and so forth with the clan collections that's not a good way to have a format where it's just two years of the same shit so nuke it uh, i think rosa to zero is probably the way i just know some people want vert to zero but i think that's a little cruel i think with Rosa to zero, the deck will be fine. Next, and this is funny, I think Gurgit should probably be hit. Now, I know we got Percival back just now. Percival came back and that's it. Of course, only to one, but that was still enough for Gurgit to become pretty insane. I don't know. 
I would say if right now you want to balance V, you want to hit Prism and Gurgit in some way. And from there, you can see, again, certain things in clan collection might have impact. So far, it doesn't seem to be the case. If you just re-establish the Percival choice restrict with Gurgit, I think that that that's fine. You know, Gurgit is still going to be a good deck. It still has the Blonde Ezel stuff, but at least it will no longer be dominating quite as much. So, so far, Rosa to zero and just choice restrict Gurgit with Percival again. Sad, boohoo, I know, but I think that's probably the best way to go about it. And then from there, let the clan collection roam free. You know, let's see what that does. Are there any other hits you want to see in V? I don't know. You could argue maybe Nitros is then too strong, maybe Tavas, but some people really want to hit the tier one and then they want to hit the new tier one and then they want to hit the new tier one all the way until their favorite deck is the tier one. <laughs> I understand, but that's not the goal here. I think if you hit Prism Gurgit, it's probably fine. If you want to hit Nitros on top, uh, maybe, maybe, but I don't think that's that required. Which brings us into Premium. Premium, oh, my love, my heart, my soul. I think in premium, we should ban over triggers. I know, I know, wow, we, we haven't heard this one yet. Well, this is a crazy new concept, I know. But yeah, ban over triggers, I think they're just as big of a problem in standard as they are in premium. It's just more obvious in premium because you have more drive checks. But even so, they still warp formats. Why do you want that? You know, premium is already the format where you have a lot of like depth and a lot of back and forth. You don't want that randomly get getting ruined by over triggers. And beyond that, it's not the primary format so Bushiroad can afford to be a little less conventional. It's also the format that seemingly is being impacted more by the western side of Bushiroad rather than the Japanese side. I don't know that of course but that's what seems to be the case you know we had that separate ban list for English as well for that reason I think. So I think you know just ban over triggers I think everyone would be happy. I also saw Bushiroad making this post about like be sure to over trigger your opponent in Springfest or something like that and everyone just being mad. That was really funny. It might also be an inside joke from someone at Bushiroad, so I don't know, but it was funny to me. So ban over triggers, that's first of all. I don't think the format is bad with them in it, you know, I don't think premium sucks, I love premium, amazing format right now, but over triggers gone would improve it. Next, I would hit Nightmare Dolls. I think Nightmare Dolls is still best deck. Previously, I always said ban Ginny, and it's honestly possible that that's not enough, <laughs> but it would be a start. Start by banning Ginny, that's a really, really solid slap on the wrist but it's possible it'll still be you know top of the line but again I don't want to murder decks it's fine if it's strong and then I would choice restrict the Gredora stride with ruination I know this is a topic that a lot of people you know disagree on some people want to ban the Gredora stride other people want to limit the Gredora stride in my opinion that isn't necessary now I know the argument for why people want her gone the reason they want her gone is because if Mega Colony gets really strong main deck support in the future they believe she will become broken once more. It's one of those strides where like she doesn't do anything on her own but your opponent can't do anything either. So if you then have cards that make you do stuff then you have a problem. This is also why Gredora and Mega Colony has sucked so much over the years. They stop your opponent from playing but they don't play themselves. Now suddenly with the Ruination which is a draw 3, give 10k to the front row and if it's the second right draw 4, give 20 to the front row. That's crazy. That makes them actually play the game. Take that away though and the deck becomes pretty fair again. Now some people say no no it'll still be really crazy. I don't know if you've played Gredora right now with Ruination when you miss your ride <laughs> you feel pretty awful. Can you still win sometimes? Sure but would you be getting the same results in tournaments? Absolutely not. So for that reason I think choice restricting Ruination with Gredora is good enough. It's also a less heavy handed hit which is usually what people prefer. I also notice in Mega Colony groups right now and I'm in one people seem to be not wanting to play Ruination when they are looking for a Mega Colony deck. So the people who truly, truly love Mega Colony, at least a number of them are like, I don't want to play Ruination, you know, show me a list without it. So it's not like they would hate this choice restrict that much. I can't speak for all of them, of course, but that's like the vibe I'm getting when I'm in there. You're not gonna, you know, piss off a part of the community quite as hard as when you, you know, nuke their only viable stride out of the stratosphere. In the past, it has been needed to nuke certain clans out of the stratosphere and that's sad. Ideally you don't have to but we have had strides that were so single-handedly breaking the game that it was necessary. So Katrina to zero was necessary. You had to hit seven cards 
to not have to hit Katrina. Then with Nuadayo, you had to hit more cards in that probably to not have to hit Nuadayo. And it would instantly have been reintroduced as a new problem so easily. So sometimes it's required. Sometimes it's truly the stride on its own breaking the game and then you have to hit it or some card on its own breaking the game and then you have to hit it regardless of how many people you piss off. But I think in the case of Mega Colony, it's not required. And now you could say, oh, but you were playing Mega Colony this, this season. You're you're biased. I played Neo Nectar. I had my Katrina deck. I played New Adayo. I had my Murakumo deck. And now I have Mega Colony. Yeah, and I play that too. There's no bias here. You know, ideally for me, nuke it. So my Grand Blue deck never has to deal with it ever again. I would love that. But I just don't think it's required. I think if you just choice restrict Ruination out of it, the deck is already going to lose a lot of tempo. Because like people are thinking, oh, it's just a draw 3 plus 10k, draw another one plus another 10k. How bad can that be? Well, it's a lot. It's a double, triple pot of greed with double front trigger. One of those front triggers is floating even, so it gains the power when you start calling over and like, it's crazy strong. If you take that away, it'll probably be fine. And even if it's not, you can ban it next season. Who cares? And that's basically it. I would like to also go over some results on Twitter, so you know that I'm not just talking out of my ass completely. Once again, shout out to Fuzzy Paradox on Twitter. They made these beautiful pie charts. So right here, we have the premium 2022 mid-season top four breakdown. So we had 13 Pale Moon, 12 Mega Colony, 9 Grand Blue, 7 Genesis, and so forth, you know. So then it starts going away pretty quickly, you know. If you if you look at Pale Moon, Mega Colony, those are some really solid numbers. And then Grand Blue, okay, still solid. Genesis, um, you know, and it's starting to go down from there. What I see here is Pale Moon and Mega Colony are the clear, you know, best decks in the format. Grand Blue after that, yeah, yeah, probably. But it's also really consistent, though. And that helps in a team format for sure. But regardless, you know, Grand Blue, a little bit lower. Genesis, very close to Grand Blue. But again, you do have to realize it's teams. So it's not like, you know, when you see a Nova Grappler here, that that means that Nova Grappler is insane. There, there's still going to be some skewed results and so forth. But it's the data we have. So that's the top four breakdown. But then I think you get a better story when you go into the first place breakdown. We get four Mega Colony, four Pale Moon, three Genesis, two Grand Blue, two Royal Paladin. I'm not sure when exactly the snapshot was. It might be missing the last ones. We need to put one very important thing into perspective here. Three of the Genesis here is the same person. <laughs> Mohammed from our team, Team Cardiff, you know, in, in the Springfest season. Three of those Genesis is him. So when you see this pie chart and you go, oh, so Genesis is clearly a problem. It's like, no, not necessarily. It might just be one player being insanely good. Also, three of this Pale Moon is Jay from Team Cardiff. And three of this Mega Colony is me <laughs> from Team Cardiff. So a pretty solid chunk of this mid-season breakdown is just our team taking up all the slots. So <laughs> that's a little bit of a brag, I get it. But that does skew data. Now, of course, had we lost those, there would also be Mega Colonies there because we played against the Maito brothers who had Mega Colony in their lineup. Uh, they had Nightmare Dolls in their lineup and so forth. But I'm just saying, you know, stuff would it skew a little bit differently as well. It's not like Genesis is that close to Mega Colony and Nightmare Dolls either. It's still a really, really solid deck, of course. Just keep in mind that one team can completely ruin this chart. But the trend is there. Of course, we did choose those decks for a reason. This would not necessarily look this way if our team had chosen Murakumo Neo Nectar Nova Grappler. Now, next for V Premium right here, we have Prism as the clear best deck. Grand Blue, a fair bit lower. Then we have Revengers, a fair bit lower. Genesis, but do note that in that Genesis, there's a bunch of different decks. So like Uranus had tops, Himiko had tops, and, and a bunch of other stuff. Fenrir had tops. So like that Genesis, you know, a bit skewed. The Shadow Paladin as well, as you can see, like a, a, a sliver of that is Raging Form and a sliver of that is Luard. And then we go into Gold Paladin, only 10%. I do have to say, Gold Paladin is very underrepresented. Not many people, you know, caught on to the Gurgit thing early on. Keep that in mind as well. And then the next in line is Narukami. Vanquisher is still a very scary deck. Then we go into the uh, first places for V. And whoa, oh, look at that. We have Grand Blue at 27%. Well, 
maybe it does need a hit in V. I don't know. Again, teams, you might you might have some some luck in there, but 27 is a pretty strong conversion, especially because you can look here, right? Like 14% in the top fours, but then instantly 27 in the first place. So it's very possible that either better players are picking Night Roses or their higher ceiling is making them win more rather than top. Now, for context, two of those Night Roses were again J from Team Cardiff. And then next, we have Burma Bermuda Triangle, 19%. Once again, two of those Prisms uh, is me again. Because we won three premium, two V, and then we got third place in uh, Overdress. But again, I don't think that's skewing Prism that much. It's Prism is basically on almost every major team that I can think of. Next, we have Genesis at 19%. And again, there's a bunch of different decks in here, like Uranus, Himiko, Fenrir. And then we have Royal Paladin next. Royal pan is really popular it's really weird to me i didn't think jewel knights was that strong but hey it's putting up the results then for standard we have magnolia at 20 percent prison at 14 gravidia at 14 bastion at 11 barrow magnus at 11 so again i don't think this warrants hitting i think all the stuff here you know magnolia prison gravidia bastion barrow bruce nirvana laura all of those decks are viable strong decks they're not equal i do think you know the, the top ones here are a bit better than the bottom ones Ones, but again, all it takes is one set for that to change again. Uh, not set five, but uh, another set, set six, and that'll be, you know, straightened out. And again, there's so many good decks. I don't think anything needs hitting in D. And then we go for the first places. Again, still very varied. We still see that Magnolia, that Prison, that Gravidia at 19-ish percent, Barrow, and so forth. So overall, I don't think any hits are, are necessary here. So that is how I think the meta is. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Again, if you want a TLDR... I I think Overdress don't hit anything. V hit Prism and Gurgit. Maybe Nitros. You know, these results might indicate a Nitros hit might be fine as well. And then in Premium hit Nightmare Dolls by banning Ginny. Ban Over Triggers by banning Over Triggers. And then Choice Restrict Ruination by Gridora. But as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to go to 50cards.shop and use the code SOLEMN for all your goodies. Again, big discounts this weekend only or like these two, three, two days. I don't know. Check out all the info and I will see you soon. Ciao.